good fit here. It's okay.
Good morning. On behalf of the class of 2022, thank you for all of y'all joining us this morning. Now, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us this morning. And as we see uh, this class, Lord, we're so thankful for the memories, the staff members, our parents that support us through everything, Lord. And now that it's come to a final for our chapter in this life, Lord, we just ask you to be with the rest of it, Lord that you can guide us and, and just be there for us when we need you, Lord. Thank you for being here today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Houston Beckworth, and I have the privilege of serving our class as the president this year. Um, so, Principal Watkins, I wanted to make this speech fun, so I thought I'd do this without, without writing a, without writing a uh, script. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> I wanted to make him a bit stressed out. I thought you were going to bring out tissues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and to make it a bit more fun, um, I was wondering who here knows how to solve a Rubik's Cube? You have 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so, uh, to get this going, or no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> we've made, guys, May 22, 2022. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty nice ring to it. Um, but, to, you know, uh, compared to many high schoolers, um, we've had quite the wild ride. Freshman year, as anybody know, is weird overall. Um, and then sophomore year, it was going, going pretty nice, but right in the middle, um, a pandemic struck us, um, and we've been dealing with that ever since. Junior year, we were, that was the main thing. We were wearing masks in the cafeteria. We, were, we had gloves on. Um, and then, of course, we, met, we won't mention the things that happened later in the year. Um, and then I have to praise God for the work that he's done this year. Because aside from some gloves that we had to wear in the, uh, in the cafeteria last semester, we've had a perfectly good year. Nothing, like there's been like no COVID, maybe, maybe once, maybe a tiny, one tiny time, but we, we made it to the other side. We made it to the other side. <laughs> All right. And it's just been crazy to see our class grow. Freshman year, if you were watching the video last night, it was, it was the pictures of the people were pretty fast, and by the end it was taking a while. That's because we went from 15 students our freshman year to 28. Oh. Okay, that's, that's pretty fast. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll get back to that. Do it again. <laughs> um, To get to this point, we've had a lot of support. Um, you know, the conference, they helped us out with the class trip a bit more than they had to. Um, parents put a lot of work into making sure that we could go to Highland. And teachers have poured time into shaping us into becoming Christ-like characters and lifelong learners. Um, and to thank the teachers for what they've done, we want to give them a gift, um, our class gift. We don't have it with us. Um, it's still in the mail right now. Um, <laughs> Um, but we have ordered new calculators for Ms. Lopez. So, uh, surprise, yeah. <laughs> um, so we ordered some TI-3030XS2s, 30, 30 um, and, and although they are not the, the highest quality, they're not graphing calculators, they are amazing calculators nonetheless. Um, they're Ms. Lopez, would, I know I talked to her, um, so it's, it's not a surprise. Um, uh, but she, she was interested in getting those calculators because it was something that a lot of the students um, had in past years, and it, was, it would be something that she could easily teach the students how to use. And um, for the ACT, um, whenever you're doing trigonometry, this probably doesn't matter to most of you, but whenever you're doing trigonometry with those, it gives you fractions and square roots instead of decimals, so that's a big plus. 
Uh, um, moving on, as thankful as we can be for everything that's happened uh, these four years, there are some sad parts. Um, Twelve former classmates um, decided that Highland wasn't for them. Gabe Bailey, Joey Cerigliano, Sofia Fernandez, Christian Flores, Nathan Perry, Minor Oro, Lily Bagshaw, Andrew Cresselius, Savannah Nance, Brian Gonzalez, Josh Seeley, and Aaron Jorgensen. Some left because of their parents, some left because of choices, and some left because they felt that Highland wasn't the place for them. If they were still here, we would have a large class of 40. But I want to, by going off of that, I want you to per look at the person on your left. <laughs> And now I want you to put, look at the person on your right. <laughs> okay, you didn't, you didn't see that one coming. Um, so, um, Barna.com is a Christian research institute, and they found after surveying a number of people um, that once you graduate high school, on average, 64% of, of young adults um, leave the church. 64, that's crazy. Um, that means between the people to your left and right, there's a pretty high chance that one of you three is going to be the, the leftover, um, or not the leftover, but the only, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the, um, the only Christian left. Um, <laughs> but, um, I'm my Bible. Um, Pastor Will, I know that um, in Bible class, um, you, you never followed through with this, but um, you said that you would have an occasional, occasional quiz just making sure that we had our Bibles, and I have it here today. All right. Um, I'm going to turn over to uh, Zechariah 13. Um, and I'm going to look at verses 8 and 9. It says, And the whole land declares the Lord, two-thirds shall be cut off and perish, and one-third shall be left alive. I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. Um, now, as many of you probably understand, um, that it, where I'm, I'm going to apply this isn't exactly probably what the prophecy means. Um, but it applies to us just as much. Um, I mean, of course, the third almost matches um, what we're facing today. Um, and most importantly, it's not going to be easy. Um, for the third that doesn't follow the common, common pattern but sticks to God, um, it's going to be a journey for sure. But as Abraham said, when it seemed hopeless, God will provide a way. Um, he'll provide a way through those flames that refine silver and test gold. And as the t singer Mark Hudson once said, through the fire and the flames will carry on. So which are you going to be? Will you put God first or will you let other things get in the way? We Seventh-day Adventists um, have theorized that in the end times, a national law banning Sunday will be ratified in the United States, just like Germany has already done. And we see this as a major concern. But equally, if not more dangerous, is um, the present. We often worry about the future so much that we forget what we're facing right now. As we've grown up, we were raised learning all the Bible stories and all our beliefs. And that's great, but my concern is that we are undervaluing the knowledge of why we believe there's a God in the first place. It feels like we're taught what it means to be a Christian, but not we are, why we are Christians. We live in a secular world and not a Christian one. And eventually, many of us are going to have to ask ourselves tough questions, like why are we are Christians in the first place. Highland has definitely developed those Christ-like characters and, and, you know, the lifelong learner section as well. But, um, <laughs> um, but um, I, when it comes to being ready to face those hard questions, I think we can all do a bit, a bit better. One of my favorite things about Highland is that it's an awesome place if you want to be a Christian. Um, it's not like you're forced to be one, but the doors are open in front of you everywhere. Um, but the thing is that once you're out of Highland, those doors are going to be a bit farther away and alternatives are going to open up. Um, let's see here. My classmates... I encourage you to walk past those doors and be ready to say, the Lord is my God. I want to challenge you to start asking those questions now when it's easy to look for truth so that when you're forced to answer those questions, they don't make your face stumble. And you don't have to do it alone. Now, now the Rubik's Cube. So I can't solve Rubik's Cubes, but Alejandra can. Pretty, oh, she's, she's doing it again. <laughs> um, and, and in the same way, we can rely on others um, to help us in our walk with God. 
<laughs> um, anyway, um, how many times have you done it now? Three times? I hope. I hope. <laughs> And I also want to challenge the teachers, and parents, this applies to you as well. Um, I know many of you, if not all of you, have faced spiritual challenges. And for some of you, those trials might have made you feel broken and defeated. But you carried on. You looked for answers. Usually, before classes began, um, each of you has a spiritual reflection in one way or another. I'd like to challenge you to not only reflect on principles or passages, but to also challenge your students so that they can be prepared when they have to face those challenges on their own and answer those questions. It's been a pleasure uh, talking to you guys. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caitlin Renee, and speaking on behalf of the senior class, we first want to once again thank all of you for coming out and supporting us. We would not be where we are today if it was not for each of you in our lives. The person we chose today to give the final speech this weekend is someone when we came in as first year freshmen, he came in as a first year staff member. He himself attended Highland Academy and then after gra graduating as a four year senior, he got his BA in management and human relationships. Um, later he attended Andrews University and received his master's in pastoral ministry. He then met his lovely wife, Miss Christie, while working at Williams Medical Supplies. He has three kids, Ethan, Bailey, and Elijah, and has lived in Tennessee the majority of his life. Amen. He's a staff member that has a song for everything. He's the kind of guy that will burst into a random song that either no one knows or everyone knows, never an in-between. He is a fun person to be around, and we all enjoy his class. Even though the occasional times we would get off topic, we always have a great discussion. And for some reason, we talk the most in his class. You wonder why? It's because, it's because he has a great way of connecting with the students and is always really, really supporting. <clears throat> he has always been an amazing person who is good at making us laugh and always bringing a smile to our faces. From the times he would do a perfect impression of Elvis to the times he knows that we're just distracting him from the lesson, but the discussion is good enough so he doesn't stop us. He is, he is an excellent staff member with, uh, <laughs> he himself is a really dependable person, always willing to help others and always setting a good example for us. For today, I decided to share his most common words to us. So. Over the years, it has consisted of his famous invisible quiet spray bottle that magically has an endless supply of ch 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 His, if y'all don't be quiet, I'm gonna give a test tomorrow. His, hallelujah, hallelujah. His, I'm serious, I will give you a test tomorrow. Ask the freshmen, they had three this week. And lastly, if you were to ask him, are you vegetarian or a meat eater? His response will be, I'm a follower of Jesus. <laughs> this shows us seniors that above all, he puts his steps in following Jesus. He is not ashamed to talk about Jesus and to be his authentic self. His conversations um, about faith is something he always looks forward to. This also helps us seniors realize the importance of following Christ and that no matter what, to not worry about the smaller things in life and that we should focus on the more important things and that some things aren't as difficult as they seem. Some are just simply following Jesus. If you haven't guessed it already, the person who is obviously sitting right here and obviously written in your bulletin, the person we chose is Pastor Will. And Pastor Will, even though we might have been really frustrating freshmen, sophomores, and believe it or not, seniors, you put up with us. Even though we might have raised your blood pressure, turned some hairs gray, and caused some steam to blow out of your ears once or twice, you've been riding the roller coaster with us. And for that, we thank you. So without further ado, Pastor Will. She spilled a lot of tea on that one. A lot of tea spilled all over the, the platform here. Hope I still have a job after this. 
I was just telling Mr. Watkins the other day, you know, I just, I just, you know, I just tell the truth and let the pieces fall where they may sometimes. And, well, let's do it again. Um, listen, uh, like Caitlin and Renee said, uh, this class is very special to me. We started Highland Academy at the same time, uh, back in 2018. Y'all were freshmen. This was my first year here. Um, and I had, let's see if I can, is this, is this is the lapel mic working? Let's see. It's not working? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Um, well, ooh, ooh, it's going to make noise. Working now? Not working. Okay. Um, I got to get in my dance routine that I promised them. Um, so when I was at Mount Pisgah Academy, when I was the pastor of the church there, um, I taught, um, my first year there, I taught the freshmen. And after that, I told them, look, I will do anything you want me to do, but I will never teach freshmen again, ever. And so my first year here, of course, part of the gig was teaching, you know, y'all as freshmen. Um, and like Caitlin Renee fondly remembers, uh, I did tend to lose my temper with them. Um, but you were very gracious in asking me to give this commencement address. And as you... As we all learned together, your sophomore year, you know, if, if you need mercy, what do you need to do? Show mercy. So y'all have been very merciful to me. And, and, I, and I, as, as, as Houston uh, uh, pointed out, you know, I would always threaten to give you that Bible quiz. And I never would. So I was always merciful. And the, let me say this. The reason for that is when I was back at Pisgah, I would have this Bible pop quiz just to make sure you had your Bible with you. Right? Pass or fail. And the first time I did that... Um, everybody brought their Bible except for this one girl that was a straight A student, had a perfect grade, and she started to cry, and I didn't have the heart. You know, I was like, ah, never mind, ah, it didn't count, it's okay. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm such a softy, I guess. Um, one of my fondest, fondest memories of this class was your freshman year. And when I say fond, I mean terrible memories. Uh, probably the worst day that we spent together, totally my fault. Um, we, we had just gotten back, and I, Alyssa Gale was the only member of your class that went on that Belize mission trip with us. And um, when, when we were in Belize, Sammy, you'll remember this, we played this game called Buzz, right? Where you got in a circle, you remember this? You got in a circle, and you would count one, two, three, four, and every five, you were supposed to say Buzz, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, Buzz, right? And if you got off or you took too long, that means you were out, right? So I was excited about that game. And you know, I'm just, I'm not the kind of teacher that comes up with all kinds of creative activities. That's just never been me. So I was like, ooh, here's a creative activity that I can do. And so I had the great idea to say, you know what, this will determine the seating chart, our new seating chart. Um, if you get out playing this buzz game, I will assign you where to seat and the last person out gets to choose wherever they want to sit. So we played that game and oh my goodness, tempers flared, tears were flowing. Uh, Pastor Will's favorites became obviously terribly apparent to everybody when I wouldn't get them out when I should have, and it was just the worst day of class ever. And of course, I ended up saying, you know what, just sit where you want, you know, no seating chart at all. Um, we had fun our, our sophomore years, and so, well, here we go. Come on, guys. I said I'd do it. Will you do it with me? Gabe, Matthias, Victor, I think. You're graduating. Let's celebrate. That was, that was from a video we watched their sophomore year. That was King Saul once he got crowned king. That's what he did. And I don't know, it stuck with us. It became one of our things. So, hallelujah. Um, guys, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Uh, you, are my, you have been my favorite senior Bible class. I'm sorry, Sophia. I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm sorry, Billy. I'm sorry, guys. But this, this has been my favorite senior Bible class. You all just have had such a, as Caitlin Renee mentioned, such, such good class discussions. Um, even when James would take us way off topic, we'd follow that rabbit trail, and I would just test my skills to segue and get back, us, get back on, on track. Um, but seriously, anytime I would um, throw a question out there, kind of a discussion starter, you know, hoping that they would say the wrong thing, and, and I could say, oh, here's the right answer, they would always have the right answer. They, ought, they have blown me away. So I really do appreciate you all. Seriously, not even, you know, seriously, folks. You are my favorite senior Bible class. Um, 
We have learned together uh, first semester. You remember what we learned together first semester? The seven stages of decision. Good. Moral, moral development, decision making. And of course, second semester, uh, we learned about ego and being an authentic Christian. And um, man, I learned probably more from y'all than you learned from me. And that just caused me to really reflect and, uh, and to try not to be motivated by ego, just to be an authentic Christian. I really enjoyed that study and glad that we could do that together as a class. Um, this class, if you look in your program, you'll see that their aim, their aim is don't stop believing. Their motto is never give up Jesus, the iconic words of our beloved Steve Wilson. I want to start with their class aim. Don't stop believing. Now, if you're like me, as mentioned by Caitlin Renee, I tend to do this. But when you hear the words, don't stop believing, what comes to your mind? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Yeah, exactly. That is Journey's 1981 hit classic, Don't Stop Believing. Some Journey fans out there, okay. As we've seen, it's one of those songs that just ignites a massive sing-along. <laughs> Don't stop believing. <laughs> we all kind of lose it after that. Street lights. Blah, 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 ah, ah. Yeah. Um, what's interesting, you know, when, when I looked at, um, when they surprised me by asking me to be uh, their speaker, I was like, what in the world am I going to say? Um, and I looked at their class aim, and that, you know, obviously that song popped into my head. So I said, well, let me, let me do a little VH1 behind the music research on this song. And I, uh, thankfully, this song itself, carries with it the message of Don't Stop Believing. Um, this song, when it came out in 1980, it only reached number nine, right? Barely made the top 10. It reached number nine, didn't even chart at all in the UK, um, and just was kind of like a forgotten hit of the early 80s, until the most recent decades, when it was featured in uh, some television shows and some movies. To, as of today, Journey's 19... Um, 81 song, Don't Stop Believing, has become the best-selling track of the 20th century. Started off as just, eh, number nine, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, hit. Now the number one best-selling song of the 20th century. Don't Stop Believing. Interesting, the, the, the man that wrote that song, he was their keyboardist. His name was Jonathan Cain. He was in a band in Britain called The Babies. Remember The Babies? Yeah, nobody knows. They, were, they, did, they broke up, um, and they were nothing. And uh, this was his life, though. He knew that this was his calling. He was to be a, you know, a, a rock and roll uh, keyboardist. And so his band fell apart, and he had nothing to do, and he was very discouraged. So depressed one day, he called his father, and his father told him these words, don't stop believing or you're dead, dude. So Jonathan Cain thought about it, edited the your dead dude part, and wrote down those iconic words that encouraged him from his father, don't stop believing. About a year later, he became the keyboardist for an up-and-coming band named Journey, and he just shared that one line. Just shared, they're, they're, they were putting together the next album, and he just shared that line. Hey, what do you think of this for, our, for a song title? Don't Stop Believing. He shared that with Steve Perry and Neil Sean, the band members, and they're like, ooh, and they just kind of crafted the song around that one line. Don't Stop Believing. Even the world, worldly song, worldly musicians, God forgive us for talking about that and singing that song in church. Um... Even the world picks up on the power of believing. How much more powerful is to place your belief in the power of God Almighty? Amen. Speaking of God Almighty, freshman year, God Almighty. You weren't even here freshman year, but that's true. El Shaddai, very good. 
El Shaddai, God Almighty. Think about it. The, the very God who just spoke the words and the whole universe came into existence. You can place your belief in him. He has a plan for you. Don't stop believing in him. Listen to this. This comes from 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 1 Thessalonians 2.13, and as I like to say, as we open God's word, let's open our hearts. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the fact that we can put our belief in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, as I, as I speak your words, Lord, open the hearts of everybody here, but especially open the hearts of these graduates, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to share the word with them one last time as a group, Lord. Speak to us through your word, in Jesus' name, amen. 1 Thessalonians 2.13, and we thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, right? This is a very, you know, lifelong learners kind of uh, verse here. When you received the word of God from us, you accepted it, not as human words, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed, indeed, at work in you who do what who believe the Word of God tells us the Word of God is at work in you if you believe the Word of God which spoke the very universe into existence he spoke it boom it's there that the power of that word is in work in you all you have to do is believe it do you believe it don't stop believing Listen to some other Bible verses about the power of belief. John 14, 1. John 14, 1. Iconic words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Are your hearts troubled this morning? Do you, do you have the plans? You got everything figured out, what you're going to do this summer, and where you're going to go to college, and what career you're going to uh, pursue. Uh, you're about to leave some of your friends. You know, the chances are very high. I, you know, I haven't seen some people since graduation day that I graduated with. Uh, is your heart troubled this morning? Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Don't stop believing. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus speaking here, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it and it will be yours. Ooh, that's power. Whatever you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it and it will be. Is it important to believe? Don't stop believing. Similar verse is found in Matthew, has a little ring to it. Matthew 21, 22. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Did you ever pray for something you didn't get? Don't stop believing. Let me read that again. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Jesus is offering us a blank check. Now, I've been sharing with you all uh, through, this, through this year the power of prayer. And I've really kind of said, ooh, there's something powerful in prayer. And I've been, try I've been trying to tap into that. And some of you have, I've, I've been reading a book about the power of just praying out loud, right? If you do a Bible study about prayer, uh, the author was saying, most of the examples of praying, people are praying out loud. I mean, he can hear the prayers of your hearts. Of course he can. But it's just something more powerful when you pray out loud. So I've just been praying out loud. And I'm like, whoa, God is just answering those prayers left and right. And Alyssa Gale and, and, and some others said, you know what, Pastor Will, we were praying out loud that, uh, what was it, some kind of test? I don't remember. A pre-cal test would get canceled. We prayed out loud, and it was canceled. Maybe there's something to that. There is. There is power in prayer. Jesus said, if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe. So, that's the condition that's given, if you believe. So let's dig a little deeper, because that's the one condition that we've got to meet in order to get the power of prayer to be effective in our life, if we believe. Don't stop believing. What does that mean? Believe. 
Believe what? Believe that you're going to get what you asked for? Should you place your belief in receiving the thing that you asked for? I don't think that's what Jesus is talking about. Or is he saying that you should believe in whom you're asking it from? Do you truly believe there's a God in heaven? Do you have any doubt that there is a God in heaven? I can tell you right now, I have no doubt. Mm. God has done so many things in, in my life. The fact that I am up here at the Highland Academy Church talking to the graduating class of 2022. Mm -mm. No. Never would have guessed 20 years ago that this would be happening. Never. There's a God in heaven. Amen. I guarantee you that. Believe that there's a good God, a good, good Father who wants to give good gifts to those who just ask. That's what he says. The, the word believe in Greek, pistuo, pistuo, it literally means to think. To think something is true. Or to place your confidence in it. Our theme this year, for this school year, has been fix your, fix your thoughts. What do you think about God? Do you think much about him at all? Because that is what believing in him really means. Pistuo literally means to put your confidence in something. What are you putting your confidence in? Your GPA? Your ACT score? The college that you've chosen to go to, is that what you're putting your confidence in? Your friends, is that where you're placing your confidence? All those things may seem important today, but that's not what you should be putting your confidence in. That's not what you should be believing in. Believe means to think that something is true. And you know, to think, you know, we, we've kind of degraded that word. Oh, I think so. Well, I think. It's really a powerful word, to think. That's why Jesus says to fix our thoughts. Uh, that's why Ellen White says, your thoughts and your feelings combined make up who you are, your moral character. So what you think is very important. Jesus says, look, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're all too familiar, well not too familiar, but we're familiar, thank God, with Jeremiah 29, 11, which we hear quoted a lot this time of year. You know I love the NLT, and I thank God that we got y'all NLT Bibles, right? I'm going to go with the new King James here. If my dad was here, I'd hear a hearty amen from him. King James, Dad. I know you're not here, but you're, anyways, we got some King James only folks here. I know y'all. This is for y'all. According to the King James, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts. Other versions say plans. I know the thoughts. I think toward you. This is Jesus talking to you. The thoughts that Jesus thinks towards you are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future, to give you a hope. So when you pray, believe in that God. Believe in the God that says, I'm thinking good thoughts about you. I have a future for you. I have a hope for you. When you pray, if you believe, you will receive what you're asking for if you're focused on that true God. That's what Jesus says. I know the thoughts I have for you. They're good thoughts. So don't give up on Jesus. That's your motto. Don't give up on Jesus. As Houston mentioned, it's, it's a sad fact. 60. By the way, Houston, you remember this from freshman year? Houston, Houston means that I'm one step closer to you. We, nobody's singing along with that one. What? Come on. <laughs> Gatlin Brothers? No? Okay. Caitlin warned you, I tend to do this. Houston mentioned to you, 64% on average, 64% tend to not stay in the church once you've kind of, you know. And it's true, and I've shared that with you. 
um, many times that it literally it breaks my heart it breaks my heart when I see uh, my students that are no longer faithful and it looks like that they have given up on Jesus and I know that might be a judgment call but from all as I'm, I'm not judging but I'm inspecting fruit okay from the fruit that I can see it appears like you've given up on Jesus 64 percent let me tell you in the words of Steve Wilson please for Christ's sake do not give up Jesus the devil is going to throw everything that he can to try to distract you, to try to get you to give up Jesus, to give up your relationship with Jesus. He'll give you pleasure. He'll give you partying. He'll give you pain. He knows exactly which button to push to cause you to give up Jesus. And he's going to throw everything he's got at you. But don't you give up Jesus. Don't give up your relationship, your friendship with Jesus. Don't give up Jesus for the world. It's not worth it. Now listen, I've shared this with you before. In my life, I've discovered, yes, there have been times where I found more love, more love. In the clubs, in the bars, in the honky-tonks, I found more love there than I found in the church. I see some heads nodding. There have been times in my life where I found more love out in the world than I found in the church. And I hope that's not your experience. But even if it is, Promise me you will not give up Jesus. I uh, was, um, I'll share, I'll, I'm going to share that later. Listen, we've learned last, uh, last semester, we learned about the seven stages of moral development. Think about those. Seems like y'all got into those. I hope y'all were being authentic with me when you seemed like you were interested in those. Remember the first level of moral development? You do the right thing in order to avoid punishment. Good. The second level, uh, you, you do the right thing because you get, you get rewarded. Sure. And then thirdly, you do the right thing in order to look good for others, kind of to conform to society. Yeah. And then number four, you do the right thing because, no, 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 number four, the law. You, yeah, because you are loyal to law and order. You do the right thing because it's the law. And what's interesting is that we learn that only 20% of people ever get past level four. Only 20% of people start doing the right thing and they never they only do the right thing because why because that's what the law says you know every year in 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 sophomore bible um jesus says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled and ellen white says we receive righteousness by receiving christ Every year I go over that, every year I give a quiz over that, and every year on the quiz or the test, and I'll say, how do we receive righteousness? Somebody will always put, by keeping the law. Because we don't get past level four, only 20% do. Do the right thing, why? Because it's the law. Number five, let's get past number four. Do the right thing, why? Out of the love for others, good for the community. Number six, the sixth level of moral development. You do the right thing because it's just the right thing to do. That's integrity. Doing the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. And then the highest level, the highest level of moral development. 
And Larry, thank God for you for putting that book out there outside of your office. This is where I got those from. It's a book by, is his name Timothy Jennings, I think? Just grabbed that book on a whim and read it over Christmas break. And oh, this is what we're going to learn about second semester. The highest level of moral development. You do the right thing because you've got a good relationship with Jesus. You want to be trekking with Jesus. You do the right thing because you're just in sync with Jesus. And don't you think that if you're in sync with Jesus, you're going to be keeping the law, by the way? Of course you will. Of course you will. You do the right thing because you're friends with Jesus. Don't give up Jesus. Never give up Jesus, your friendship with Jesus. Like I said, look, people will let you down. Pleasure will let you down. God forgive me for saying this in the church, but the church will let you down. It let me down. Church, don't let them down. Please, I forgive you. I went through the hardest time of my life I heard from one person in this church, one person, one. God bless her, Rhonda Littell, God bless you, Rhonda. Don't do that to them. But, get, you know, but I came back to Jesus, and guess what? Jesus led me back to church, here I am. So there I was, starting to give up Jesus, in a bar, Second Avenue, hearing some really good country music, by the way, Ben. Really good stuff. But it was Friday night, it was the Sabbath. I was listening to worldly country music. I was drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Didn't buy that beer, somebody bought it for me. Showed me some love. And as I'm sitting there, actually standing there, smoking this cigarette, drinking this beer, Holy Spirit whispered to me, he's like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, especially on Sabbath. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm having fun, and yeah, you know, people love me here, they're buying me beer, lighting my cigarette, they're killing me, in, in reality. Um, and the Holy Spirit whispered to me, he said, you know what, you need to stop doing this, it's wrong. And I remember just thinking to myself, yeah, but eh, I don't care. And as soon as I said that, I literally felt like the, the, the breeze, the wind of somebody kind of backing off from you, right? That was the Holy Spirit saying, oh, really? Okay. And that scared me. I did not like that feeling. Now this, you know, I'm just being authentic. I didn't throw down my beer and stomp out my cigarette, you know. Uh, it wasn't that kind of, not that kind of testimony. But I did start talking more to Jesus. And I never gave up on Jesus. I gave up on the church. I quit coming to this church for years. But because I never gave up on Jesus, I maintained that connection with Jesus. And the more I talked to Jesus, he sent me some people into my life. Like Christy. More worldly than I ever was. <laughs> you know about that. We've talked about that. And through Christy and Bailey, living a mile down the road from this church, yeah, you, you want to take Bailey to Sabbath school? Sure, right? And the more we kept not giving up on Jesus, the more Jesus led us back to his body, the church. So a lot of times when you, you know, I mean, the Highland Church, you know, we're, we're an academy church. And so we kind of gear a lot of our, our programming towards you. When, when, when you go to college and once you kind of graduate from college, if you don't go to an Adventist college, you just go on to, to a community college or something, your church may not be geared towards young people. And you'll feel like, oh, there's nothing for me here. Don't give up on Jesus. And you know what? Don't give up on that church. Be the change you want to see in that church. Never give up on Jesus. Jesus is never going to give up on you. Don't stop believing that.
Karis, uh, just one second. Um, Ms. Christie, could you come on up? Come on. <laughs> Pastor Will, you want to stand up? Um, so, you know, Pastor Will, um, he's one of, been one of the greatest faculty at Highland for our class. Um, he loves and trusts us so much, telling us things he probably shouldn't be telling us, like, oh, like he was just saying about Christy. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think. During, um, we just had our senior mock wedding, and Miss Christy went and bought a $50 cake for us. Um, during, um, we had a Vespers we were doing, we were doing a skit. Miss Christy went and she got a, um, a, a robe for me to be the judge in that skit from I don't know where. Um, they were our third sponsor on our class trip, and they've just done so much for us. They've been through us these years. They've kind of grown with us as we've grown at Highland, and we want to appreciate them for that. So we've, we've got some flowers from Miss Christie. Thank you. And, uh, Love cannot be mine. 
Hello. I'd like to present some awards at this time. Um, we're going to start with a few individual awards, and then we've got some awards from the colleges. Um, this year, we got a letter from the uh, conference education, from the Union Education Office, uh, a teacher and training scholarship. Um, the scholarship that the student will be receiving is as follows. The first and second year will be $1,500 uh, per uh, a year to help with their expenses to become a teacher. Uh, the second and third years, or excuse me, the third and fourth years will be $2,500 a year. Um, this year, the initial recipient is Heather Payne. Another award from, uh, this is from the North American Division. It's called the Caring Heart Award. It's to a junior or senior who has a strong citizenship record, has given evidence of a personal commitment to witnessing service activities um, by exhibiting initiative and responsibility for carrying through on such activities. A student, uh, through participation in witnessing service activities, should serve as an overall example on campus. and. Um, the criteria may include significant and varied participation in service type activities, witnessing experience and mission trips. The award consists of a plaque, a Bible with their name on it, and a $500 scholarship that is, uh, can be used for college or to go on any mission trip or other service type activity. The Caring Heart Award this year, uh, selected by the faculty, is Houston Beckworth. <laughs> the Tate and Rachel Scholarship Award was um, inaugurated a couple of years ago. Rachel Williams was a member of the second class to graduate from Highland Academy in 1948. Uh, her class, I'm told by her son, uh, were the, was the class that gave the bell tower to the campus. Um, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Williams had several children. They believed in Christian education and that it was very important and they decided that the, uh, it was a first priority to give their children an Adventist Christian education. Because they believed that the monetary outlay was not an expense, but rather an investment. Amen. They sacrificed greatly for all of their children to attend Highland Academy. One of those children was uh, Lieutenant Colonel R. A. Williams, U.S. Air Force, retired. Um, he, like his mom and siblings, graduated from Highland. He was a class of 1974, I believe. Um, he actually came back this year for his 50th uh, reunion. No, it was 72 of them. Um, he wanted to do something that would honor the faithful sacrifices that his parents made in order to allow him to and his siblings to attend here. The criteria he chose for this scholarship reflect his parents' priorities. This award goes to a junior who is returning to Highland to graduate. That's one of the stipulations. Um, the scholarship to be applied in the senior year it should be need-based. The recipient uh, should show academic promise, although they need not be a top student as long as they're doing their best. The recipient should be someone who has shown service-oriented and mission-minded inclinations. Um, after the initial award of, in 2020, the family increased the scholarship to $2,000 a year to be divided equally by semester, 1,000 per semester in their senior year. 
So, this year's, recipi or this year's recipient of the Tate and Rachel Williams Scholarship is Esther Lewis. We have one more individual award, but I'm going to save that till after the scholarships are given out. Um, this section features, uh, has become a feature of the graduation service basically since the Adventist colleges have started coming here as a college fair in, our fall, in the fall. Uh, representatives from all of the Adventist colleges in North America come um, and tell the students what their school is about. Um, Students are encouraged to apply. All application fees are waived during this time, which is a significant amount of savings. Um, to, uh, the, you're going to hear some pretty good sounding numbers, um, some high dollar things, but the numbers that you'll be hearing are a four year total for the award. So it's not gonna be this much per year, okay? They have deep pockets, but maybe not that deep. Um, the students, uh, the, the award amounts are based on several factors, uh, but two chief ones are the students' GPA and their ACT scores. There are other factors, though, I'm told, and each college has slightly different formula for this. So, um, I've tried to arrange for a, a bunch of different people besides myself to award these, and we're going to be doing them in alphabetical order, except for Southern, they've asked to be last. Okay. First, though, would be Andrews University, the flagship of Adventist education. <laughs> I have two degrees from Andrews myself. So students, as you, uh, as you hear your name announced, uh, we're going to try to meet out here so you can get your picture, okay? Oh, and to, to, get, to get your name read here on a scholarship today, they had to complete the application and be accepted by mid-May. So that's why some people aren't going to get some because they didn't finish the task, okay? Amelia Ashcraft, in the amount of $32,000. Gabriel Beretta, $32,000. Also for $32,000, Brandon Ogden. Also for $32,000, Adrian Reeves. <laughs> the amount of $40,000, Heather Payne. $48,000, Megan Kearney. Also for $48,000, Caitlin Renee Cook. For $48,000, Anna DeLeon. Anna de Leon. Uh, 
She was my worker for two years. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Anna. For $48,000, Sedona Hessler. For $48,000, Karis McConnell. For $48,000, Victor Reynoso. For $56,000, Alyssa Bagshaw. Also for $56,000, Houston Beckworth. For $56,000, Magali Brand. Also for $56,000, Thomas Copley. Also for $56,000, Tyler Hillebert. <laughs> Finally, from Andrews, $56,000 goes to Helena Wade. Mr. Alvarez. Good morning, everyone. Pacific Union College sends congratulations to all the Highland Academy students. Pacific Union College is pleased to recognize student achievement with significant merit scholarships. The college proudly awards the following scholarship to be applied to our tuition costs beginning fall 2022. The scholarship amount below reflects the four year total amount for this renewable scholarship. On the amount of $44,000, the trustee's scholarship goes to Amelia Ashcraft. The Founders Scholarship on the amount of $36,000 goes to Gabriel Barrera. <laughs> the President's Scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to David Beckworth. Another President's Scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to Magali Brand Rodriguez. <laughs> Yet another President's Scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to Nazir Brevik. President's Scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to Thomas Copley. <laughs> the President's Scholarship for $60,000 goes to Tyler Hillebert.
President's Scholarship, $60,000, goes to Linus Kuntz. <laughs> the Dean's Scholarship, on the amount of $52,000, goes to Caris McConnell. Founders Scholarship of the amount of $36,000 goes to Monday in CB. The Trustees Scholarship on the amount of $44,000 goes to Heather Payne. Trustees Scholarship on the amount of $44,000 goes to Joshua Reeves. <laughs> the Dean's Scholarship on the amount of $52,000 goes to Judiet Rios. President's scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to James Smart. The President's scholarship on the amount of $60,000 goes to Helena Wade. I've been asked to recommend, uh, to represent the university that I graduated from, Southwestern Adventist University. Much like Highland Academy, which is known for being a welcoming and friendly place, Southwestern has that same reputation. What they lack in size, they make up for in heart and friendliness. I have one scholarship to give out. This one is to Imani. Mondi Masibi, you have a scholarship. It's actually two scholarships for the same university. One is $8,000 from Southwestern Adventist University and $3,000 freshman scholarship from the Southern Union. Good morning. My name is Timothy Kuntz. I am one of the professors at Union College and their physician assistant program. And so I have been asked to present the uh, scholarships from Union College. I did not know that I was going to get asked this year. Um, I didn't get asked leading up to this weekend, not by any fault of Mr. Sherman's. Um, so I didn't have the proper requirements to be on stage as these gentlemen did. And so I'm going to present the scholarships by Union and the wardrobe by Sherman. <laughs> All right, for the uh, $16,000 scholarship, Matthias Mena. <laughs> also for $16,000, Monday Masibi. $16,000 to Dalen Barkholz. $20,000 to Joshua Lloyd.
$20,000 to Brandon Ogden. Also for $20,000, Amelia Ashcraft. $24,000, Joshua Reeves. $24,000 to Cordell Bray. $24,000 to Gabriel, Gabriel Bereda. $24,000 to Sedona Hessler. $32,000 to Victor Reynosa. $32,000 to Caitlin Cook. $32,000 to Judia Rios. $32,000 to Ana De Leon. $40,000 to Megan Carney. $40,000 to James Smart. $40,000 to Magali Brown Rodriguez. $40,000 to Houston Beckworth. $40,000 to Tyler Hillebert. $40,000 to Alyssa Bagshaw. $40,000 to Nasir Brevig. $40,000 to Helena Wade. And last but not least, my favorite graduate, $40,000 to Linus Kuntz. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be handing out some scholarships for Walla Walla University, but I want the record to show that I am a proud graduate of the Southern Adventist University. <laughs> Walla Walla University. Here we go. Uh, $11,500, Imani Masibi. $45,500, Victor Reynoso. $46,000, Gay Bereda. $46,500, Mr. Brandon Ogden.
$50,000, Amelia Ashcraft. $50,000, Heather Payne. $50,000, Adrian Reeves. $54,000, Caitlin Renee Cook. $54,000, Sedona Hessler. $62,000, Anna De Leon. $62,000, Linus Kuntz. $63,500, Megan Carney. $70,000, Nasir Brevig. $70,500, Tyler Hillebert. $70,500, James Smart. $70,825, Thomas Copley. $71,500, David Beckworth. $71,500, Alyssa Bagshaw. $71,500, Helena Wade. Good morning. My name is Jessica Williams, and I'm here representing Southern Adventist University. How many in this room either have attended, graduated from, or were employed by, or are employed by Southern Adventist University? If you would raise your hands. Wow, very nice. We love you, Highland Academy Amen. community right. and family and friends. Thank you for your support of Adventist education here at Highland. And we hope to see your students at Southern in the fall. Southern Adventist University equips students to embody academic and professional excellence, but we do not stop there. We are committed to helping you make a difference through service and discovering your unique calling. You will form lasting friendships in small groups, on mission trips, and while participating in campus clubs at Southern. Our number one goal is to help you embrace a meaningful relationship with God and pursue a spirit-filled life of service. Even though Southern is the largest undergraduate Seventh-day Adventist institution in North America, we are and always will be a small school where students truly are the foundation upon which we are built. The scholarships I'm presenting are for those who applied and have been accepted to Southern and are based on the student's cumulative high school GPA, their ACT or SAT test score, leadership experience, and other qualifying attributes. These merit-based scholarships will be distributed over four years. 
and we also award need-based and work match assistance to qualifying students, and those are in addition to these awards. Today, Southern will be awarding a total of $577,000 to 25 students. <clears throat> so students, when you hear your name called, please see Mr. Watkins, an esteemed alumnus of Southern. He's gonna be helping me <laughs> pass out these scholarships today. The first scholarship for $8,000 goes to Amelia Ashcraft. Our next scholarship of $34,000 goes to Alyssa Bagshaw. Next, we have a scholarship for $8,000 that goes to Gabriel Beretta. Next, we have a scholarship for $34,000 that goes to David Houston Beckworth. The next scholarship we have is for $36,000, and it goes to Magali Bran Rodriguez. Our next scholarship for $8,000 goes to Cordell Bray. Our next scholarship for $46,000 goes to Nasir Brevig. Next, we have a scholarship for $24,000 that goes to Alejandra Camacho. Our next scholarship for $26,000 goes to Megan Carney. Our next scholarship for $23,000 goes to Caitlin Cook. Scholarship of $24,000 goes to Thomas Copley. Next, we have a scholarship for $16,000 that goes to Ana De Leon. And also for $16,000, our next scholarship goes to Sedona Hessler. Next, we have a scholarship for $34,000 that goes to Tyler Hillibert. And for $24,000, our next scholarship goes to Linus Kuntz. For $20,000, our next scholarship goes to Joshua Lloyd. And for $42,000, our next scholarship goes to Karis McConnell. Our next scholarship for $10,000 goes to Imani Misibi. Next, we have a scholarship for $8,000 that goes to Brandon Ogden. Next, we have a scholarship for $16,000 that goes to Heather Payne. And for $20,000, our next scholarship goes to Joshua Adrian Reeves. Next, we have a scholarship for $26,000 that goes to Victor Reynoso. Thank you. 
And for $16,000, our next scholarship goes to Judiet Rios. Next, we have a scholarship for $24,000 that goes to James Smart. And last but not least, our final scholarship for $34,000 goes to Helena Wade. It is a pleasure to award these scholarships with a promise from Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Southern congratulates the seniors and their families for this wonderful milestone. last award that we have today is the <clears throat> smallest financially. Each year, Highland Academy staff selects one or more students uh, from a graduating class, usually a male and a female, to receive the Student of the Year Award. The persons uh, selected for this award are people whom the staff feel best represent Highland Academy and who display the qualities and ideals that we want Highland to nurture in those who pass through these uh, doors. The award comes with a plaque engraved with their name, a $100 honorarium, and our love. This year, Highland, Univer or <laughs> Highland Academy Male Student of the Year is Victor Reynoso. Our Female Student of the Year, Judith Rios. Not yet. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chad Watkins, and uh, it is my uh, honor and privilege to uh, uh, serve as the principal here at Highland Academy. This is my opportunity to express my appreciation uh, and congratulations to the class. But before I do that, um, I want to express my appreciation uh, and gratitude to you parents. You, um, you sacrifice so much. And what a joy and privilege I have on behalf of the, the staff at Highland Academy to interact with your young people on a daily basis. And um, for those of you who wonder why, forty seconds. Forty seconds. It's because they mean a lot to me. And their presence on this campus is felt. <clears throat> For those of you who come to these uh, ceremonies faithfully year after year, you already know that this is expected. <laughs> and I've come to realize that the only thing that separates you and me is that I have to do this publicly. <laughs> and you get to do it in the confines of your car or restaurant or home but I'm especially grateful for this one last time that I get to speak with you guys. I've also realized that 
Apologizing for getting emotional is not truly authentic. At times it seems to be the running joke, but I refuse to apologize for caring about your children. I'm so proud of them. When I look at the faces of each one of you, my, wa my mind wanders with all of the great memories that we've shared. And it's often said each year that the success of the school year is largely due to the leadership of the seniors. And they have led so well. Amen. And I couldn't be more proud of you. It's hard to believe that this moment is upon us. Just a couple days ago, I had the chance to speak for eighth grade graduation and I could see almost each one of you here sitting on this stage, especially those of you that came from Highland Elementary School. And your whole life is in front of you now. I know you're excited. I know you're ready to go. And there are a few things that I want to say. I'm pretty sure you've probably heard them from me already a time or two. But I wanted to share with you just briefly what's on my heart. So seniors, <clears throat> I'd ask you to live life with humility. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes that even though Jesus was God's very son, Jesus made himself nothing. He took the very nature of a servant and he humbled himself even unto death on the cross. If this kind of humility was good for Jesus and was to be modeled in his life, I would think it should be good for us as well. I challenge you to put others' interests above your own, to be a servant, to do for others what nobody else will, take up for the weak and outcast, and in all your ways acknowledge him. Seek to bring honor and glory to him through your words and your actions. Number two, I challenge you seniors to live life with purpose. In 2 Corinthians 5.8, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. As Christ's followers, you're going to be given opportunities to share your testimony and the good news of the gospel with the people that you come in contact with, the people that God places in your heart and in your life. God prepares you to meet with these people through the connections that you make, the life experiences that you have, your talents and your special gifts, and through the Holy Spirit working through you each and every day. You don't have to be an evangelist to make a difference in people's lives. Remember, God will present you with that divine appointment. All you need to do is let the Holy Spirit work through your heart and be willing to say something when he prods you. Seniors, I challenge you to live life with a renewed sense of dedication. Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. It takes a long time in life for most of us to truly understand who we are in Christ, why our lives have meaning and value in God's eyes, in spite of how others view it, and why your identity and mission in life are not dependent on the job the role, the title, or the position that you may hold. Because you're going to be immersed in a culture that bombards you with non-biblical messages, I encourage you to make sure you still spend a lot of time in prayer and a lot of time in God's word so that you can transform your mind, so that you can continue to fix your thoughts. And then lastly here, I want to share with you what I probably believe to be the most important thing that I can say to you. <clears throat> if you've forgotten everything else, don't forget this, please. Live life with a renewed faith and commitment. If I'm speaking real with you right now, I'm sad to share that you're going to experience failure. You're going to experience failure. Jesus in his last days is spending time with his disciples at the Last Supper and he predicts that Peter is going to deny him three times. And that's exactly what he does. 
But prior to this interaction, I want you to hear what Christ says in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. He says, Jesus, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. You see, Christ knew that Peter was about to go out and deny him three times. He knew that's what was going to happen. But in that moment, he was praying, praying for Peter that even though that's what he was going to do, that his faith would not fail. That he would turn back to him and that when he turned back, that he would strengthen others around him. Seniors, I believe with all my heart that you're going to, you're going to experience some failure. You're going to experience some pain, some heartache, and some frustration. But I employ you. I pray for you the same way Jesus prays for you, the same way they pray for you. That when you fail, that your faith will not fail. And that you'll hang in there. That you'll keep fighting. That you'll keep pushing forward. Never give up Jesus. As you leave these hollowed grounds, we are all here in this church praying, praying for your faith. We know you can do it. We know you will do it. Much has been sacrificed just to bring you here today. And it's a bit, I don't know, I don't know that I want to speak for all of them out there. But there's a lot of joy and a lot of sadness all tied in together. As we send you out to bid God's will in everything that you do in your life. So hang in there. Lastly, I would like to ask the staff uh, of Highland Academy to stand, teachers and staff. Please. Yesterday, Imani told me she was gonna come give me a hug when I did this. <clears throat> Come on, Imani. <laughs> Bring it on. This morning when I was walking to church, Anna asked me if I had a box of tissues. Seniors on behalf of Highland Academy and the staff, we salute you for your achievements. We thank you for the experiences and the relationships built. We pray for you that you will remain faithful and praise him in all circumstances. And we pray that you will remember what you've been taught. And that's far more than just reading, writing, and arithmetic. May you always know that you have a home away from home here at Highland Academy. We are your family, and you have made us proud. Amen. Our mission here at Highland Academy is to develop Christ-like characters and lifelong learners. But now it's time to realize and remember, don't just talk the talk. Live it. In my role as president of Kentucky Tennessee Conference and uh, chairman of the Highland Academy Board, it is among my most favorite experiences on my yearly calendar to be present for this occasion, this celebration. And uh, indeed, it reflects, why is it so? Why is it such a, a wonderful thing for me? It kind of reflects the fruition, the, the, uh, the measurable results of the incredible investment of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in this ministry we call Seventh-day Adventist Education. It has a long storied history. It goes all the way back to the late 1850s when in Bucksbridge, New York, a little Seventh-day Adventist school was established. It would be some years later, following the organization of the church in the 1860s, that officially Seventh-day Adventists kind of adopted 
Seventh-day Adventist education as one of the forefront ministries of the church. And of course, here we are all these many, many years later. Some of you know that Seventh-day Adventist education represents easily the largest single investment by dollars and time and personnel of anything that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is involved in. In fact, in the Kentucky-Tennessee Conference, it is true to say that Highland Academy represents the single highest investment of dollars and probably pretty close to personnel uh, as well in terms of, of uh, the support, uh, the desires, uh, again, that's a good word, just the investment that uh, we put in for this occasion, but importantly, as it has been touched on by Mr. Watkins and Pastor Will, is today is not really, though it's time to celebrate, and it's rightfully a, a, an opportunity to take pictures and smile and hug and just uh, congratulate, as we should, the senior class of 2022. The, re the, real, the real test are the days ahead. I was listening carefully to Pastor Will's sharing this morning. Love Pastor Will, he's a great guy. You said something as you were preparing to kind of move into the more formal thoughts just before you prayed and you said something like this, it's, it's my last opportunity to have a word to share, you said something like that. And I was thinking of that, that uh, that kind of represented uh, the thought that this would be the last time that you can formally preach, lecture, share. <laughs> But when you talk about the word, the real success of Seventh-day Adventist education is not so much that today is kind of the final shot of faculty, staff, and the board chair, and the president of the conference to say anything. The real goal, the real aim, the real desire is that the word that Pastor Will alluded to, that's not just a collection of syllables, but that's a, real, a, a living, real reality of a person, Jesus Christ, that that word will not <laughs> will not cease today. More than speaking in your ear, that is, that is a person who will pursue you the rest of your life. Uh, sometimes uh, with a, a lot of vigor, sometimes very loudly and dramatically, as Pastor Will shared earlier, but often just a still, quiet voice talking to you, encouraging you, always expressing this unending message that comes from the throne of God that you are loved. And though it may not always feel like it, you are loved by your church. You're loved by the people that have the honor, like I do and others, to serve you in this church. It seems to me that we haven't got it down perfect, uh, alluding to the statistic you shared earlier that a number of you will kind of buy out of this. True of my class, going back a lot of years ago, uh, long ago and far away, I think there's just a handful of us that stay invested in, seventh, in the faith of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We don't have it down perfect. We have this formula of classes and curriculum and, and social events and kind of woven all through it is Jesus. But no matter that we don't have it perfect, know that this perfect God, this perfect God will continue to be just right at your side, never leaving you, never forsaking you, loving you all the way up till the end until at last, I pray for all of you, he will welcome you home. So congratulations. Well done, and I join your friends, your faculty, and your staff saying, man, absolutely never give up on Jesus. He's absolutely never going to give up on you. Amen. This time, uh, Usually, I just take a couple of minutes to say a few words, but Houston shot everything I was going to say with his statistics here. You did start out with 15. At some point or other, you've had 40 in your class. 12 people are not here with you today. That makes me sad. But I'm glad that all of you are. So, to take a couple of seconds here, if this is your first year at Highland Academy, would you stand up? If you've been here this, this year alone, If this is your second year here, please stand. Thank you. If you've been here for three years, please stand.
Thank you. If you've got the white cord, please stand. For your seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody want to graduate some kids? When I first came here, uh, Mr. Bishop, my predecessor, told me that this must be read before every graduation, so bear with me. By virtually the authority vested in this institution of learning through the National Council of Private School Accreditation, the Accrediting Association of Seventh-day Adventist Schools, Colleges, and Universities, the Middle States Association of Colleges and Schools Council on Accreditation and School Improvement, and the State of Tennessee. Highland Academy will now, on this 22nd day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2022, confer a diploma upon each graduating senior in this class. Principal Watkins, fellow members of the platform, families and guests, I do hereby certify that I have examined the records of each of these candidates, and I found them to be complete and in compliance with the recommendations or with the requirements for graduation from Highland Academy. Graduating with high honors, David Houston Beckworth. Wande Imani Masibi. <laughs> Graduating with honors, Victor David Reynoso. Graduating with honors, Caitlin Renee Cook. <laughs> Graduating with the advanced diploma, Amelia Ruth Ashcraft. Graduating with high honors and advanced diploma, Alyssa Gail Bagshaw. <laughs> Dalen Faith Barkholtz. Gabriel Alejandro Beretta. <laughs> Graduating 
Graduating with high honors, Magali Estefany Brand Rodriguez. Cordell Larkin Bray. <laughs> Graduating with high honors, Nasir Taylor Brevig. Graduating with high honors, Alejandro Camacho Pinto. First row, please sit. Second row, please stand. Go ahead. Graduating with high honors, Megan Kendall Carney. Graduating with high honors and advanced diploma, Thomas Braxton Copley. Stay back. Miranda Arcelia Cortez. be okay if I hadn't screwed it up before. Maybe. Graduating with high honors and advanced diploma, Ana Sofia de Leon. Graduating with honors, Sedona Lynn Hessler. <laughs> Graduating with high honors and advanced diploma, Tyler Glenn Hillebert. Graduating with high honors, Linus Daniel Kuntz. <laughs> Joshua Andrew Lloyd.
Graduating with honors, Karis Elise McConnell. Matias Alejandro Mina. <laughs> Brandon E. Ogden, Jr. Graduating with honors, Heather Michelle Payne. <laughs> Joshua Adrian Reeves. Graduating with honors, Judith Valentina Rios Nava. Graduating with high honors, James Charles Smart. Graduating with high honors and advanced diploma, Helena Elizabeth Wade. All right, I would like to close with prayer. Uh, Jimmy and Father, uh, just thank you. Uh, we've made it. I mean, there's half of us that have been here for since we were born, and then there's half of us that have been half around the world. I just thank you for bringing us here and for getting us through this school year. Uh, we know it's according to your plan. We know that every single one of us here is because you wanted us here and you made it possible. Um, I thank you for all the parents or grandparents or relatives or just friends that have supported us and helped for us to receive this education. Um, Lord, we don't know what we're doing, and I ask that uh, you just show us, because you do know what, we're doing, what we need to do. And uh, you know what your plan is for us, so I ask that you show us what that is. Um, not only do we not need to give up you, but I just ask that you never give up on us, because we will turn away. And I just ask that you always run after us and pull us back, Lord. Um, I ask that you bring us back together one day so we can see our friends and our families and just just continually remind us of the impact this had on us. Thank you for getting us here, Lord. In your name, amen. 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 It is uh, 
It is my privilege uh, to recognize the newest members to the Highland Academy alumni, the class of 2022. It is also now my privilege to uh, recognize the new senior class of Highland Academy, the class of 2023. As the uh, juniors are lining up for our uh, final processional, I do want to just say one final time, uh, thank you everyone for uh, your support, your prayers, uh, and your blessings on what has been a fantastic school year. And uh, I pray that uh, may God return soon, and when he does, may he find us all faithful. Thank you.